We want to begin this morning by simply saying Happy Mother's Day to all you incredible moms out there. As I was praying for you this week, the verse that came to mind was, do not be weary in well-doing, but in due season you will reap a harvest. And no matter what season of motherhood that you're in right now, whether you've got little babies or toddlers or teenagers or wannabe teenagers or grown kids, um, whatever season that you are in and whatever that looks like, whether you're able to be with your ch children right now or not, God is with you. And do not grow weary. Yeah. Continue to sow those seeds of faith. Yeah. Continue to sow those seeds of love and kindness and service to your kids and your family because in due season, you will yeah. reap a harvest. God is watering those seeds and it is going to produce fruit. We love you guys. God, we thank you for your presence. We come boldly before you. We thank you that where two or three are gathered in your name, that there you are in the midst. And so we thank you that you're right here in our midst. There's more than two of us here. God, we thank you that you are in the midst of every home, every vehicle, every sidewalk, wherever people may be watching. God, we thank you that your presence is there and that your presence is tangible. For you said that as we draw near to you, that you draw right back to us. And so as we take a moment to just draw near to you and enter into your presence, Father, we thank you that your presence is rich and that you are meeting us here. God, we thank you that in your presence is all that we need. So we cast aside all of our cares, all of our anxieties, all of the fears. God, your word says that perfect love casts out all fear. And so right now, we just declare the fear is fleeing from each person. Father, we thank you that fear has no place, that it has to go, because you, perfect love, are with us. We bring our praise, you bring revival.
presence of you, our King. Let the King of my heart be the mountain where I run, the fountain I drink from. He is my song. And let the King of my heart be the shadow where I hide, and the ransom for my life. Oh, He is my song. You are you're
Good morning, everyone. We're so thankful that you've decided to join us today. If you're viewing with us this morning and you uh, call the Anchor Church home, I, I just want to simply encourage you in this, that even though we can't meet together at this moment, it, it doesn't mean that we've ceased to be a church family. So in light of that thought, I just simply today want us to have a family talk. To do so, I want to begin with this. When, when I was a kid, my brothers and I used to play this game called Follow the Leader. Now, the concept was pretty basic. We would all uh, hop on our bikes and then we would, you know, look at everybody that was there and then we would choose a leader and then the leader would, would go up the road and we would all follow him. So if, if you can maybe imagine with me for a moment, here's kind of what it looked like. Uh, the chosen leader would typically ride up our long dirt driveway and he would ride kind of at a steady pace, making sure that everyone was behind him. And then once he got to the mailbox and kind of had everybody in the position where he wanted them, he would turn around quickly and he would go as fast as he could back down the driveway. Now, if you can imagine as he's going around the driveway, it's almost like he's sliding in the gravel. And then right at the end, when the when the driveway would begin to straighten out, he would he would try to, you know, hunker down and muster up all the speed that he could get because he knew coming up, there was a, uh, a strategic uh, you know, speed bump that our grandfather placed right before his house. And so he would try to go as fast as he could so he could ramp off of it. And then when he ramped off of it, he would go on down the driveway and he would coast in between the, the barn where we made sweeping compound and the, and the chicken coop. And once he, he got through those two buildings, he would take a, a sharp left and, and then he would begin to weave in between the bushes and the trees right before he headed to the pond. All the while, the rest of us did our best to make sure we could, you know, keep up with him so we could see to it that we were mimicking everything that our chosen leader was doing. It's kind of funny because as I sit here today, you know, and I think back to those times we played that game, I, I realize now that I that that simple game taught me a valuable lesson in life. And that lesson is simply this, that in this life, we can only be led by someone when we give them permission or the authority to do so. Or we can say it like this. In this life, we will only be led by something when we give it permission or the authority to lead us. Now, why am I bringing this simple life lesson up today? To put it plainly, in my heart, I am really concerned about what I'm seeing and what I'm hearing in the lives of so many believers today in the body of Christ. Because to me, it seems like everywhere I turn, I'm hearing about this person being led by fear. And then I turn around over here and, I, and, I'm, and I'm hearing about someone who's being led by the latest conspiracy theory. And then I, then I go over here and I'm, and I'm hearing all this about people who are being led by their anger and their frustration. Now, please don't misunderstand me. I'm not saying that every Christian, you know, falls into one of those categories because that's certainly not the case. But there are enough people being influenced right now by these things in a negative way that the that the warning signs or the warning signals really in my in my gut man they're just going off so please let me explain why this leading can be so dangerous you see if the enemy can get us to be led by uh, the fear of everything that we are seeing and we are hearing then he will succeed in paralyzing us in our forward movement and our god-given assignments to the point where we will actually resemble gideon in the wine press you know, if the enemy can get us consumed or led by the latest conspiracy theory on YouTube or on Facebook, then he will succeed in getting our hearts and our minds distracted from God's truth, which inevitably will dull our discernment. And lastly, if the enemy can get us to the point where we are being led by our feelings of frustration and anger, where all we do is gripe and complain, then he will succeed in getting us to use our authority, which is, uh, which is the words of our declaration for his benefit. Here's my point. Once these areas have taken root in our hearts, they have the potential of becoming driving influences in our lives, which blurs our decision-making process, and ultimately, it will render us ineffective for the kingdom of God. Even as I'm saying these things, I can hear some of you saying these things. But PQ, people are dying. But, but PQ, they aren't telling us the whole truth. But PQ, aren't you seeing the decisions our government is making? 
Once again, please don't misunderstand me. I'm not saying we throw out wisdom. I'm not even saying we shouldn't discern the times we're living in, nor am I saying that we should go stick our head in the sand and act like nothing's happening. But here's the point that I want to make. All I'm saying is this, is that we as believers, we that are people of the kingdom of God, that we need to be careful to make sure we are following the right leader during this time. Because you see, if we don't have the right leader, we won't have the proper perspective to know how to navigate the season we're in. You know, with that statement in mind and all those things that we just talked about, please hear Galatians chapter 5 just for a moment. It says this in verse 16. This is the Apostle Paul talking. He says, So I say, let the Holy Spirit guide your life. Hear that again. So I say, let the Holy Spirit guide your life. In other words, the Apostle Paul is urging us to let or to allow or to give permission or to choose the Holy Spirit as the guide, or we could even say as the leader of our lives. Now, why should we heed the words of Paul today? You know, why should we choose the Holy Spirit as our leader and as our guide? For starters, let's look at Hebrews chapter 12. I want to read verses 27 and 28. This is the New Living Translation. Listen to what it says. It says, This means that all of creation will be shaken and removed, so that only unshakable things will remain. If you can, just kind of, you know, visually uh, underline that. So that only unshakable things will remain. Since we are receiving a kingdom that is unshakable, let us be thankful and praise God by worshiping Him with holy fear and awe. So the first reason we should choose the Holy Spirit as our leader and our guide is because while it appears like this world and and its systems are being shaken right now, guess what, gang? The Holy Spirit is not. He is uh, not being shaken and He never will be. So our first reason that we need to choose the Holy Spirit as our leader and as our guide is this, is the Holy Spirit cannot be shaken. You know, at the end of the day, our circumstances and all the things that people are saying, all these things that are that are grabbing our attention, all these things that we're gravitating to at this moment, all those things are going to change. But once again, the Holy Spirit will not because He is the unchangeable one. So if we, if we can, man, let's just lean into Him today and let's lean into that truth. The, the second reason we should choose the Holy Spirit as our leader and our guide is because of this. Number two is because it is our divine right and privilege as children of God. Let's look at Romans 8, 14 through 16. It says, For all who are allowing themselves to be led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. Not that they will be, not that they might be, but they are sons of God. And then it says in verse 15, For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons, by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. And the Spirit Himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. Come on, if you can, grab a hold of that truth today. Being led by the Holy Spirit is one of our greatest privileges as children of God. If I could take a moment, I just want to expound on that truth. You know, as I was preparing this, I I felt like the Lord just said, look, you know, son, I'm just asking you to simply remind my children of the Holy Spirit's role in their life. So let's let's take a deeper look into that really quick. Jesus said this in John chapters 14 and 16. He said this, he said that he was going away, but he promised us that he would not leave us as orphans, that he would not leave us helpless. Now, biblically, we know that when the Holy Spirit came, it was the fulfillment of that promise. If I could take this a step further, Jesus said that it was to our advantage that the Holy Spirit would come because he would not only be with us, but he would be in us. Think about it. The moment that you and I gave our lives to Jesus Christ, uh, the Bible tells us that the Holy Spirit, our personal teacher, our personal helper, our personal comforter, our personal advocate, our personal guide came to live on the inside of us. How amazing is that? And if we realize or not, his number one responsibility, his number one goal is to help and to guide you and I uh, in this life in a way that would honor the Father and it would glorify uh, Jesus Christ. 
So we need to realize that as our guide, the Holy Spirit understands every trap and every obstacle along the way, that he knows every lie and every tactic of the enemy. In fact, Jesus said this. He said that the Holy Spirit will show us things to come. Now, I think this, when you actually stop for a second and, and dive into what the Greek language means there, when Jesus said that he will show us things to come, it's a pretty cool meaning. It, it actually means this. It means that the Holy Spirit will be a guide who shows a traveler, that's us, the safest course through an unknown country. I want to say that again, that the Holy Spirit will be a guide who shows a traveler the safest course through an unknown country. So this means that we can be confident today that the Holy Spirit knows exactly how to get us, uh, you know, safely through this difficult situation and this really unknown situation that we are currently in. So if I could just close this simple thought, I'd say this. That's very clear that when we consider all that we just talked about, that God has invited us to live a lifestyle, guys, a lifestyle where we are consciously aware that He is always with us. You see, this invitation is established on the living revelation that the Holy Spirit, once again, is not only with us, but He is in us, and He desires to be actively engaged in every single detail of our lives for no other reason than this, because He loves us, because we're sons and daughters of the most high God. So with all that in mind, I believe it is important for us to realize that the Holy Spirit will never force us to choose him as our leader. In fact, if we can look back to Romans chapter 8, verse 14 again, it says this. Notice the key word here. It says, for all who are allowing themselves, don't miss that, for all who are allowing themselves to be led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. Now, it's really interesting because the two word pictures that the Greek language uh, gives us here for the word lead it, it are simply this. The first one describes the act of leading an animal, such as a cow or a goat. Not that I'm calling anyone a cow or a goat this morning, but, but if you can imagine that the act of leading an animal at the end of a rope, it, it depicts this. It depicts an owner who would wrap a rope around the, the neck of an animal, and then he would tug or he would pull until the animal started following him. When the animal decided to cooperate and follow the gentle tug, it could then be gently led, key word, gently led to where its owner wanted it to go. Now, the other word picture we find here is this. We, we find that someone is extending their hand to us so he can gently lead us. So either way you want to look at it, the point is made clear. Like the game Follow the Leader that I talked about from when I was a kid, the Holy Spirit is willing to lead us, but first He needs our cooperation. He needs our permission. He needs our submission to His authority to do so. Before we close, I simply want to ask you, at this moment in time, with, with everything that's been going around us for the past couple of weeks, if we can just maybe honestly, you know, just from an honest heart, ask ourselves, man, man who am I following this morning? You, you know, what or who am I allowing to be the leader and the guide of my life today? You know, there's no doubt that the enemy, right, that, that the media, even our own emotions would love to lead us. Uh, but rest assured today that there's only one who has our best interest in mind, and his name is the Holy Spirit. So I encourage you to say yes today to his leading. I, I encourage you to, to actually maybe just, uh, you know, block out all the distractions and begin to give careful attention to his tugging, his pullings, his promptings that, that he is definitely, uh, you know, putting in your heart. I, I would encourage you to, to even do this, to take it a step further and to begin to ask the Holy Spirit to increase your sensitivity to His voice and to His ways. And I just believe today that as you, as you do that, as you obey the Word of God, that you'll find that the Holy Spirit, just like we talked about earlier, will put out His hand and He will gently lead you to a place of faith, that He will gently lead you to a place of peace, that He will gently lead you to a place of discernment where you understand what's really the truth. And I also believe that He will lead you to a place where uh, you know, He begins to use the authority that He's placed within you 
you for His kingdom and for His sake. You know, I just want to simply end by saying this, that, that I believe that if you do what we're talking about today, that you'll find that the Holy Spirit will lead you to the exact spot that you're desiring to be in this life at this moment. And you'll find that it'll be a place of fulfillment and not a place of, you know, worry or disappointment. So let's close in prayer today. Lord, we want to learn how to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. We want to know that you sent him to be a leader and a guide for our lives. So today, Father, we just open up our hearts to the Holy Spirit. We ask you to help us to learn, to recognize the Holy Spirit's voice and to know what he is leading us to do. So with all of our hearts today, we ask that you help us become sensitive to him so that he can lead us in all the paths you have designed for our lives. Father, we pray and we believe this today in the name of Jesus. Guys, thank you so much again for joining us today. And once again, to all you moms, happy Mother's Day. We hope you have a great day. We love all of you. See you soon.